America. Industrial miracle of the century. From all the states flow bounteously the products of forest, mine, and field. From her workshops pour all the needs of modern living. By air, land, and water, these treasures of enterprise are sent out to every point of the compass. No job is too big for American industry. Nothing is too small for the best in materials and workmanship. Look back a few generations and realize the advances America has made. Articles once were wrought by single pairs of hands with crude implements in quality that varied with the knowledge, skill, and honesty of the individual. Today, able workmen with wonderful machinery do better work at lower cost, while advancing mechanical arts have brought new ease to the multitudes. Where the plodding workmen of former times labored alone, with neither guidance nor help, meeting no set standard of quality, industrial America marshals resources, science, and power unlimited to bring a quality product within the reach of millions. Forty spoke holes at one operation. Jobs formerly tedious and uncertain are now done in the wink of an eye with gigantic tools which the old-time craftsmen never knew. The old-time craftsman's tools were a thousand times slower, his skill a thousand times less accurate. The hand of today's workman and the performance of his machine are guided in the smallest details by science. The greatest American manufacturers maintain vast libraries of technical books, records, and informational data. This earnest effort to make every possible improvement applies to even the smallest things. The greatest example of America's success is the motor car of quality. Any place on earth, you will find America's automobiles serving the people. Even in Borneo, the home of the legendary wild man, although New York is 12,000 miles away. All over the world, the automobile is relieving beasts of burden. People have learned what smooth, powerful, and quiet transportation means in enjoyment and health. On the smooth surfaces of boulevards in many cities, scenes like this are duplicated every minute. Millions know intimately interesting places, like the Grand Canyon, which were names only to the house-tied generations of former times. Farms are brought close to the cities, and families in the country keep in touch with all that is doing. The American farmer enjoys the world's highest standard of country living. Scientific production of quality, backed by immense resources, greater than any other in the world, have earned a public preference unequaled. It is no accident that the low-priced modern six-cylinder automobile has been elected as the world's most popular car. Over eight million buyers have recognized the great American value and have chosen for their own the motor car now bought by more people than any other. Weighing the value, they not only secure better performance, convenience, and luxury for themselves, but they also supply the incentive and resources to make possible even greater values for tomorrow. These motor cars furnish lifeblood to all American industry. The automobile consumes over 15% of all steel produced, one half of all malleable iron, over two thirds of all plate glass, over one-fifth of all hardwood lumber, over 14% of all cotton, one-quarter of all lead, one-third of all nickel, and almost four-fifths of all rubber, to say nothing of paying the railroads hundreds of millions of dollars a year for carrying thousands of carloads of freight. General Motors makes almost half of all motor cars, and the largest member of the General Motors family, Chevrolet, is the largest maker of automobiles in the world. An ever-mounting call for raw materials is sent forth by the demand for complete modern transportation. Purchases of the finest materials are made in tremendous quantities from mines, forests, and fields in every region of the United States. In steady stream, 
millions upon millions of dollars in payment go back to support miners, producers, farmers, and makers of supplies. Power, water power, coal, and plenty of it is purchased to keep the far-flung factories going. Timber, from silent forests that spread over the nation's mountain slopes, selected logs in enormous quantities are rafted down great rivers and carried onward by rail as well as water. All markets must be scoured to find materials that meet quality standards from which there must be no deviation. The purchase of all these supplies is the world's biggest shopping job. No manufacturer in the world uses so much iron and steel as the makers of the great American value. But materials in the rough need the touch of skilled workmen and precision machinery to shape them for service. Machines that work with the exactness of a watch cut out such wonderful parts as gears for the Chevrolet synchro mesh transmission. This wonderful machine cuts the gear teeth perfectly and stops of its own accord just when the job is finished. This makes possible low cost and brings to the man of modest means all the advantages of fine car transportation. After every cutting, inspections are made. Gauges that test the gears in final inspections are themselves tested regularly. Every synchro mesh gear must mesh perfectly. Demand for six-cylinder transportation requires the biggest drop forge plant in the world. Furnaces bring steel to white heat, ready for the powerful drop hammers that pound them into shape. A hammer that weighs 120 tons, every time it comes down, 58,000 pounds of pressure come with it. The Chevrolet Forge plant at Detroit is the best equipped in the world. 200 hammers and forging machines use 1,800 tons of raw material a day. The biggest motor plant in the world is needed to make the million six-cylinder engines demanded annually by the American people. In the production of the hundreds of parts necessary to make this modern, low-priced, quality motor, every point is protected by scientific checking. The test gauges used for checking crankshafts test both the balance of the crankshaft and also all machine surfaces. But in the making of this great car, more than machinery is needed. Machines grow constantly more intricate. They need the watchful guidance of well-paid operators. And every man earns more because of the machine that helps him in his work. Day by day, mechanical giants like these open their jaws and give forth a product for which the engineering genius of men has fashioned them. This automatic frame assembly plant is all one great machine extending over four city blocks and electrically controlled throughout. Steel plates are put in at one end, and assembled frames come out the other. These factories and machines are only giant tools under the control of many thousands of men whose daily work is giving the public better performance, new luxury, and greater convenience in transportation. No manufacturer pays his workers more than the makers of Chevrolet. Whole towns, even cities, have been built around its factories. Let's take a look at some more of these machines and their guardians. Machines that are doing work which men alone could never do. What do you think of a press that weighs 456,000 pounds, pressing at one operation the whole side panel of an automobile in one piece? Safeguards are thrown about every operation and movement. This mighty monster cannot move until its master puts both hands on the safety bar. Plain sheets of steel under this 300,000 pound monster's grasp assume the exact shape wanted in half a second. Think how long it would take the workmen of a few generations back to turn out even one of these body parts. Fenders, stamped out in one piece, 
from the highest quality heavy gauge steel. This fender press weighs 200,000 pounds. It stands 22 feet high and 10 feet below the ground. It exerts a pressure of 300,000 pounds. The great American value calls for the never ceasing watchfulness of experienced workmen. Cylinders must meet the exacting standards of accurate test gauges. Many parts conform to measurements within the thousandth part of an inch. For inspecting the great American six-cylinder motor, gauges are used that test as closely as one-tenth of the thickness of a human hair. Transmissions are assembled with extraordinary care. Inspectors watch and check each operation. Millions of six-cylinder owners have learned what precision machining means in adding to the life of the car. In the transmission system, exhaustive tests and experiments are made to secure perfection. The Chevrolet synchro mesh transmission must be checked for silence at every speed. Such parts as crankshaft bearings, valves, and cylinders get special inspection all along the line. Inspectors check inspectors, and other inspectors check them. Every part must be made right and put together right. Valves are formed in machines that never vary their movements the smallest fraction of an inch. Scientific research in the interest of the car owner is constantly discovering new ways to better the product. Engine valves of pure silicone steel are made by a special and exclusive process. Every working day, 360,000 small parts are painstakingly inspected by experts using test gauges and checking devices. Hundreds, thousands of checks and double checks. Highest quality is the goal of America's largest motor car manufacturer. 5,162 inspections are made on the six-cylinder Chevrolet motor alone. On the General Assembly line, out of every 10 workmen, three are inspectors, ready with a quick eye and special knowledge to find any flaw which might exist in materials or workmanship. To produce a million of these cars each year, America's greatest industries must play an important part. Vast forests of the finest hardwoods contribute to the making of stylish Chevrolet Fisher bodies, the strongest in the world. And throughout the great forest comes the lumberman's cry of timber as the trees come crashing down. The way is long, the night is dark, but I will mind all the happy lark will be singing at the end of the surprising degree, today's automobile bodybuilders follow the traditions and ideals of the men who wrought by hand traveling carriages for kings and nobles, to which have been added new standards of comfort and utility. 
When it was found that hard wood combined with steel gave the strongest and best body construction, the method was perfected and adopted for the modern low-priced automobile as well as for all the highest priced cars. When steel is reinforced with hard wood, you have the strongest and safest automobile body. Over 10,000 pounds of leather, 200 million pounds of wood, 54 million pounds of glass products, 3 million pounds of wool, and 52 million pounds of the South's best cotton are used in these bodies. Besides the products of timber forests, the quality car body demands the finest of plate glass. Brought to a white heat in the roaring furnaces, some holding 20 pots of molten glass at one time. Only America can produce this fine, clear glass in the quantities and quality needed. Acres upon acres of perfect plate glass are made daily to shield the car rider from cold, snow, and rain. To the casting table, where molten glass becomes clear and even plate. Glass as few outsiders ever see it. And here is the funniest industrial operation in America. Pressing out the air bubbles underneath the glass. The march of the wooden soldiers. <laughs> Watch the China doll on the right. A solution kept at even temperature aids in polishing the surface to give the undistorted vision of the famous Fisher windshield and clear window glass. Great vacuum cups, like the tentacles of an octopus, reach down and grasp the panes of finished plate glass and carry them away to be cut to size. Here at Miami, Florida, tests are constantly being made exposing duco, wood, and metal surfaces to all weather to check the wearing qualities. Exposure is made in a tropical climate, in the humidity of salt sea air, in the burning sun, in soot, wind, and rain. Wonderful advances in the fineness and durability of finish have been made, not content with what seems ample assurance of the enduring lustrous quality of genuine duco. Some of these duco panels are left in the open for years, constantly examined very closely for effects of exposure. All of this is done to produce the brightest and most lasting finish, to meet the demands of every climate. How long will chromium plate, nickel, and copper wear? Tests tell the tale. How long will wood stand up under all sorts of exposure? The facts are found here. Now let's go, let's go to the sunny south and listen to the songs of the dockies as the cotton crop is gathered. I hear them angels calling loud, keep in the middle of the road. They waiting there in the place we found, keep in the middle of the road. I see them stand around the big white gate, traveling along for years to it ain't no use but sit and wait Just keep in the middle of the road Children, keep in the middle of the road Children, keep in the middle of the road Don't you turn to the right, don't you turn to the left Just keep in the middle of the road I hear them angels calling loud Keep in Just keep it in the middle of the road. 
Don't you turn to the right, don't you turn to the left, just keep in the middle of the road. Purchased every year by Chevrolet, vast quantities of cotton make their way from the southern fields to give modern traveling luxury to the motorist. And as comfort is an important item, this cotton must be the pick of the crop. 22 cotton states share in the proceeds from every sale of the great American value in automobiles. <laughs>